With us now is Jim Trotter. Welcome to the show. How are Thank you? Thank you. I'm doing great. How are you? Good. We got to meet last night. You came into New York. Did you have any difficulty traveling here? Or sometimes people's planes were canceled and all kinds of things were going down. But... No, it was smooth for me. I, I took a red eye from San Diego, uh, left about 10.30 p.m. there, stopped in Detroit, made the connection. So everything was smooth. Glad that you're here. Have you been Thank to you. the Big Daddy Golf Classic before? Yes, ma'am. Okay. It, um, you know, this tournament, I, I'm on vacation, and so um, normally on vacation, the last thing you want to do is have to get on a plane for some place that you weren't scheduled to go or whatnot. But with Rich, he gives so much to so many that when he told me he was doing his tournament again, it was no question I'm going to be there. So, so this is the last of three weeks of vacation for me, but... This was penciled in. I was going to be here. I'm happy to be here. And again, it's just another way to get back to him because he gives so much. Do you remember the first time you met him? What that was yeah. like? Well, no, I remember okay. the first time I saw him. I was okay. actually at the NFL scouting combine. Didn't know who he was or anything, but some of the other writers knew him. So they're talking to him and it's like this, you know, relationship where it's real cool and everything. And I'm like, hmm, who's that? And so someone mentioned who he was, but I still didn't know who he was. And then along the way, he kept popping up in places that I was at around the NFL. And I'm like, OK. And then we struck up a conversation and I'm just a real genuine guy. And, and I learned more about his business and whatnot. And then it, there was a point I was looking for life insurance and um, some protections and him being in that field. He helped me to get it. So it's just been, you know, both a personal and a professional friendship. Tell us about your journey in football. Um, like Oakland? I mean, like you've been some places. Yeah, for me it was, you know, you play in high school like every young kid and, and, and you love the game and you have aspirations of one day playing it. But for me, I've always been a realist, so I, I knew I was never going to be good enough to play. So even w play professionally. So even when like some small colleges came around, it was like, no, I want to uh, I want to focus on a career. And then I asked myself, what's a way I could have a career and stay close to the games? And one was by being a sports writer. And so that's what I did. I, you know, um, I graduated from Howard University. I went to a couple of small towns. I wound up in San Diego. After a while, I was covering the Chargers. After that, Sports Illustrated came around. And then after that, ESPN came around. And then ultimately, NFL Network. And so now it's just a matter of, of trying to do work that matters. So. I try and focus more now on stories that have consequence and stories that give voices to people who don't ordinarily have voices. And in this case, a lot of times that means minority coaches and minority personnel people who are trying to climb the ladder. And then ultimately, I just want to tell stories that kind of humanize these players a little bit, um, take the helmet off and show people that they're three dimensional beings, you know. So that's where my focus is now and, and however long I have left. When you write and someone's you mean when done I bleed? something, what? When I bleed? When you bleed. <laughs> Writing so is bleeding sometimes, trust me. <laughs> All right, when you bleed. <laughs> if it leads, or no, if it bleeds, it leads, right? Um, when you're writing, you mentioned something, and I did do some research on you about giving people that voice, sure. right? And, and being active and uh, being someone that stands for something and having substance, sure. right? Not just reporting on the fluff, but like having some depth to you. I'm wondering how you feel about something because I'd like to have a conversation with you. When somebody says, oh, they're the first black person to do this. Sure. Tell me your thoughts on that. Um, it's significant from this standpoint. I always say representation matters. So for instance, being a Hall of Fame voter, um, a handful of years back, they created what they call a contributor category, meaning that scouts, executives, owners were no, lo no longer going to have to compete against players to get into the Hall of Fame. And so as I looked at that category, the thing that was fascinating to me is that the NFL has been around for over 100 years. There has never been a black contributor in that category. And the question I would ask then is, are you telling me that over 100 years of, of pro football, there has never been a black who has contributed enough to this game outside of playing or coaching it to be in the Hall of Fame? And so in doing research, 
there was someone who really stood out. His name was Bill Nunn Jr. He's not with us anymore, but he was instrumental in the Pittsburgh Steeler dynasty of the 1970s. He was a former newspaper guy who created a, um, a black college all-American team. And so he was, he was intimately familiar with black college players. And at that time, NFL, player, NFL teams weren't pulling from black colleges um, very much. And so the Pittsburgh Steelers ultimately ended up hiring him. He was sort of the conduit to bring in many of the players from the historically black colleges and universities who contributed to the Steelers becoming that dynasty, whether it was, you know, John Stallworth, um, Donnie Shell, Mel Blunt. I mean, you go down the line. And so I, I took it upon myself to say his story needs to be told. And for several years, I kept pushing for him. And it wasn't just me, but other people got involved. And ultimately, he got in last year, which is tremendous and um, for him and his family. And so again, that's just an area where I think it would be very easy to overlook these people and their contributions. And I choose not to. I choose to try and, and be, shine a spotlight and on them. And being curious, right? Being curious. You're like, well, the question is. Well, in this business, right. you have to be curious. Yes. You know, or you don't belong. So, yeah, no, it's true. Right. Looking for the answers, seeing the connections, seeing the parallels, seeing what could be done better, seeing and, what could be done differently. Sure, and also ultimately holding people accountable as to why things are done a certain way or why certain people aren't in the Hall of Fame or why certain people aren't hired, you know. And, um, and there are people who don't want to ask those questions, and I get it. It can be uncomfortable, but that's kind of what, the territory is, it comes with the job. It's exciting for me today because I met a woman named Maria um, and I'm gonna be interviewing her tomorrow. She's the first female president of the Nassau Community College. Mm. But here's where it's exciting. She's a former student. From the college? Oh wow, it's coming full circle. Yes. Yeah, very cool. I was so excited. I had a brief conversation with her today. She was so excited to be here to celebrate everything that's happening with the Big Daddy Golf Classic and with the Share Luncheon. And I just looked at her for a moment and I just really let that sink in. You know, I said, it's not just that you're the first at something. It's also that you deserved it. But it's also super cool that she was cause in the matter of her own journey. But see, so, what it does, when I say representation matters, and, and we can talk about it from a football standpoint. So when a kid like me, who looks like me, walks through the Hall of Fame and says, I'm never going to be good enough to play in this game, and I'm never going to be a coach, but there is a role for me in this game, that one day I can be in here with the immortals, that matters, you know? And, and the same thing now, I think it's important to shine a light on women who have contributed to the NFL and have not gotten their due. And it's time for a woman to go into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And I'm not talking about in the media wing or something. I'm talking about as a contributor to this game. Um, so that's why I always come back to representation matter, because when that young kid, uh, male or female, can look at individuals and say it's possible, right. it's powerful. It's possible. It, right, yeah. it's possible and everyone can be included. Sure, absolutely. Nothing's impossible. Like everybody gets an opportunity. Absolutely. I love that. I didn't think we we're going to have this interview, but I'm glad we did. <laughs> no, no, because you know, when I, I don't use cue cards, obviously, and we're not on teleprompter. It's just two people sitting down having this conversation. And I thank you for that. No, you my know, pleasure. Because that's Thanks really for having what me. I think it takes. It just takes people having conversation, shining a light on something and saying, hmm, let's be curious. And right? it takes people listening. I thank you. People have to be willing to listen. You're amazing. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. And we met in an elevator. Talk about an elevator speech. I know. That's how we met. We were going to do the hokey pokey, and you just kind of looked at me and said, hmm. <laughs> no, you, you, I kind of keep to myself. You introduced yourself, so that was uh, very cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. We've been living it up right here with Jim Trotter. Uh, stay tuned for more. I'm Donna Drake.